<clears throat> hey, peace family. This is Kyle Dixon here for another post. Uh, I know you haven't heard from me in a while. I've been uh, working on some things. Uh, also been doing some things as far as um, the podcast I've been working on, the Grand Rising Collective podcast. If you haven't peeped it out, definitely check it. Definitely do your due diligence and uh, make sure that you check out all the episodes we have. We have a, a latest episode uh, with Dr. Lorena Poe in reference of the uh, COVID-19, uh, the coronavirus, some people call it. Um, and this Post family um, is really about the children. You know, I'm an educator. Uh, I work in the uh, public schools and I work in charter schools here in New York City. Um, and I've also worked in other cities, uh, Chicago, Nashville. Um, I've done public and private. Uh, I started with the young children, the primary grades, and I worked my way all over to high school and also into uh, college uh, classes as well, um, college level classes. Uh, but what I really want to talk about is the children. I really want to talk about the children. A lot of times during these uh, times of difficulty, challenges, you know, people forget about the children and me being an educator, you know, my mind is always about, you know, how do we how do we make sure that our children are safe? How do we make sure that they're educated properly? How do we make sure they, that we give them enough tools to be able to function on their own, think for themselves and have good judgment, good character as far as their ability to make a living, their ability to live in society, their ability to have families, uh, their ability to just be able to socialize with other people. So um, I want to just kind of give you some data, uh, just kind of give you a, a, a scope of what's going on. So due to the COVID virus, the coronavirus globally now, we're not just talking about America, but globally 1.5 million children are at home due to the coronavirus. That's 1.5, excuse me, not 1.5, I mean 1.5 billion children are at home due to the coronavirus, right? Globally, worldwide, right? So let me give you another piece of data. In America, 300 million, 300 million children at home. So out of that 1.5 billion with a B, 300 million children in the US are at home due to coronavirus. Now, even with some of my students, uh, they've expressed some difficulty. Uh, I teach uh, high school and I teach adults as well. And both of them are having some issues with adjusting to the online classes and whatnot. And I wanna focus more on the children, as I said before, because a lot of times we feel like, you know, children, you know, just do what I say, do what I tell you and just get it done. And children don't work like that, right? We, we oftentimes, we, we, we harp on them about them not being what we, uh, want them to be or the standards we set for them, they're not able to meet them. And then we wonder like, oh, you know, these children out here, they're crazy. They don't know what's going on. Or, you know, we're, we're going to be lost uh, when they become adults because they don't know what they're doing. And they're just so um, uncultured, unmannered and uh, just no direction. Well, you got to think that children are raised themselves. Children are raised by adults, parents, guardians, and when we say that children have failed, that means we have failed as their guardians and their parental figures to guide them along in life. We have to remember that, that children need to be guided in the right directions. And if you don't do it, somebody else would do it. And again, it might be something that would become a detriment to themselves, their families and society as a whole. So there are other countries that are, that are, that are taking the initiative to help make sure that this transition from being in a physical school where they're with their friends and everything like that, I'm going to get into that later, to now them being at home with their family, their parents, their, uh, their, their, their siblings, uh, whatever their family dynamic is, uh, they're there, right? They're there. And some of them are feeling a lot of anxiety and fear and depression. Um, other countries are starting to kind of get into the, get into the act of making the transition as easy as possible. Like for instance, Italy. Uh, Italy uh, has about 8.5 million students that they're uh, trying to get adjusted to this new way of learning. So they've set up like internet and TV curriculum 
to help aid in the, the children being able to get their lessons to still keep up with their learning pace of what they're uh, getting in school. Uh, Peru. Peru's dealing with the social uh, emotional emotional side, the social emotional side of the students. So they're providing like services uh, to as many students as they can to help to kind of deal with the, the, the adjustment because uh, it is it is mainly a, a, a very big shift for a lot of them. Because you got to think you're dealing with K through eight in some places and then, you know, nine through 12. So it's a di you're dealing with different dynamics. Um, Turkey, Turkey is dealing with uh, certain things as well, dealing with like again, television, internet, they're, they're trying to provide uh, internet services to, to those that who don't have it, like those maybe in far off towns or smaller cities, they're trying to provide these things. So other countries are doing things and getting in, and getting in the uh, groove of doing these things to help to people to adjust. Unfortunately, America is not doing uh, as much as it probably could be, but these are strategies these are ideas that we could possibly use and maybe even you can use in your own home uh if you have the ability to to help to make the adjustment for your children and for yourself so um i, I want us to remember family that when we're dealing with our children no matter what the situation it is about empathy and like solidarity empathy love solidarity your children have to feel like you know you you understand them to some extent right and they have to feel like you're in this with them, not like, you know, just do as I tell you. No, they have to feel like we're in it together. You have to reassure them that you're in it together with them, that we're all going through this and it's going to be a challenging time. But as a family, uh, as a small community in your household, we're going to get through this together. And they need to hear that from you and they need to feel that and see that from you. Right. So even if you're going through tough times, express that. Right. Express that to your children. It, talk to them, talk with your child, talk with your children, because now do you have to tell them everything? No, of course not. But you have, please share with them if you're feeling stressed, if you're feeling tired, say, hey, look, I'm feeling tired right now. I can't deal with this right now with you, but let's talk later. Let's figure out a time. I need, I need quiet time right now. You know, I need, I just need you to relax because mommy or daddy has to do this right now. Right. And then if you want to do this, Give me time and we can we can come back to it. Right. And if they still want to uh, 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 have a temper tantrum or not, then that's something you might have to deal with. That's something that has been building up up into that time. So when a lot of times when, when children throw temper tantrums, especially when I'm having in my classroom, it's something that has been building up over time that wasn't addressed. And that happened. That doesn't happen as much as it used to when I first started teaching with the younger, uh, the primary grades. But it's something typically dealing from home or from or from their environment, their, their, their neighborhood that has board that has bored over in the classroom setting. So just be mindful, ask them certain questions. How is your even if you even though you're still in the same house, how is your day? Are you having a difficulty with your teacher? Um, uh, what's going on? Like you have to be involved. And, and, and again, I've had your students, your children for up to eight hours. Most teachers have your child for eight to nine hours a day. You may see them in the morning, which is maybe an hour, hour and a half. And then once they get home, let's see, say they get home at five o'clock, that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five, six hours right there. And then they're supposed to be going to bed. So you don't really have any, you, we have more, more interaction with your children than you do. Hence why uh, a lot of people regard teachers as one of the excuse me, one of the uh, undervalued professions, because a lot of times people don't realize how much time we spend with your children, how much effect we have on them. But I want to reemphasize, the mother is the first teacher of the child, right? Let me say it again. The mother is the first official teacher of the child. There used to be a term uh, that I got from Malcolm X, he mentioned his book uh, called Mother Wit. Right. They used to say that whatever the child was born, whatever, like intelligence or awareness or consciousness, they call it mother wit. Why? Because when we come we come out of women, mothers are mothers. And that's the innate wisdom and innate uh, uh, intelligence. Connections to their consciousness that a child has. So that first teacher, that first teacher, the mother, they're looking at you. They're looking at you. You're looking at their father. Uh, they're looking at those parental figures in the household and saying, well, hold on, I wonder how they handle stuff. And they're getting their uh, their template from you. They're getting a template how to act, how to behave, how to correspond with other people from you. 
So keep that in mind as well, that they're watching you always. They're always soaking up. They're always a sponge. And, it, and again, a lot of times, not what you say is what you do. Sometimes it's both, but more times it's what they see, they see you first and they see what you do. All right. So two things, uh, two sayings, repetition. They say repetition is the father of learning. Right. So, you know, the duality repetition is the father of learning. Consistency is the mother of mastery. Consistency is the mother of mastery. So these are ideas. Right. When we're talking about keeping your child productive, as I stated, one. First one, one, talk to your child. Make sure you talk to them, please. Like, like I said earlier, please talk to them. Find out what's, what they like, what they don't like. Uh, express to them if you're feeling stressed, if you're feeling uh, proud, um, if they're not feeling proud, if they're feeling stressed. I mean, you gotta think that they're used to having and being in school. School is a social environment. People for, tend to forget that. It's not just about going in there and learning what you have to do and sit in your seat and listen to what the teacher says and don't, don't be disruptive. School is a social environment. I tell my students this all the time. You come to school not just to learn, but to be social with your peers. You learn from me, you learn from your peers, I learn from you, we learn from each other. It is a social learning environment. If learning is not coming from you to me and from me to you, meaning reciprocal, that means, that means something is wrong. That means that learning environment is not at its best if I'm not learning from you and you're learning from me. OK, school is a social environment. So keep that in mind. So please talk to your children. Also, read to them. Second one, read to them. Please read to them. Read to them and let them know, like reading is important. Literacy is important. Like, like seriously, literacy is connected to the prison rates. They say that if a child does not read well, by the time third or fourth grade, they're already they're already predicting that that child will be in prison or incarcerated by the time they finish high school or either right after high school if they even graduate. So these are these are stats that you may not know of. You can look these up. Um, and some of the stats I mentioned earlier, you can look these up uh, coming from the Washington Post, coming from NPR.com, coming from the New York Times. Like these are stats. Please look these up. All right. So please read to your children. Read, read to them at bedtime. Uh, read to them during the day if you have time. Set up a reading time. OK, set up a reading time. Um, if it's not reading, then, you know, set something up where it's an audio book. Maybe y'all listen to it. The audio books on YouTube. So don't. So go check those out. Audio books on YouTube are key. Uh, also, remember to praise them. Number three, praise them for their good efforts. If they do something positive, praise them for that. Right. Just as much as you get excited for that. For that show to come on or that or that sports game, which we're not watching sports right now, but for that sports games or for that TV show or for those new sneakers or a new outfit or going on a trip. Praise your children. They want that. They need that. Um, they may not tell you, but the, I'm telling you they want that. They want that good praise. You don't have to be like, oh, good job. Hey, you can if you want to. But they just want to say, hey, you did a good job today. I appreciate you. You know, you really came. You really came through, and mommy or daddy, or we appreciate you for 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 behaving today. Good job. You know, give them a fist pound. However you all communicate, hug, kiss, whatever that is, do that for them, please. They really want your affection and, and adornment from you. They need that. All right. Uh, something they could also pick up. Uh, number four, something something they can pick up. Learn a language. Right. You have these free services online. Babbel. You have du Duolingo, which I use, right? They can learn a language, get them to learn a skill while uh, while they're away from school, something they can go back and add uh, to their repertoire of skills. Learning another language is great for them to learn how to see see the world in a different way. It's it's a great opportunity uh, for you all to maybe do something together. Maybe you want to learn a language too. You all can learn it together and practice with each other. Y'all can practice the language, right? Children have, you know, their brains are sponges. So maybe them learning a language going on Duol Duolingo, and it's free. They can learn a language in that, in that way that can maybe enhance their experience while they're home. All right. Uh, also, uh, number five, five, um, board games, board games, playing cards, Uno. Like I'm, I'm oof, Uno, no one can, uh, look, you don't want to mess with your Uno, right? Spades, I know some people Spades, Bidwis, uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Pinochle, I don't know, that's an old school joint. Um, I declare war, you know, do simple card games. I played those as a kid, you know, those teach you card games that teaches math, that teaches strategy, uh, that teaches, 
um, analytical thinking. So these are all skills that even though it's a game, you're still picking up skills and learning because you want to be you're able to use this downtime for your child to be able to pick up skills and learn more, to assess more. Right. It's not just about them going online and getting the getting the uh, assignment from the teacher. It's about also them learning stuff from you, too. It could be through games. It doesn't have to be you know a book all the time. Right. So games are important. If, if they don't want to like, do that, there's apps, there's game apps on the computer, on their iPads, on their phones that they can do. And you can check their scores and things like that. So just be mindful of that. Number six, a project. Do a project with them. Number six, do a project with them. It could be a cooking project. It could be a painting project. It could be a clean the house project, clean your room project. Um, those things that, you know, get them involved, get their body moving because I think they're sitting down in one place for the whole day. Typically, they would get up and move around. You know, but and allow them to do that too. These projects allow them to move around and be active, but also be productive. So please, like, have them move around. Children like to move around, especially boys. Boys love to move around. Girls too, but more boys because we just have a lot of energy. So they don't have to run around the house, but they can walk around the house. You know, get up, get maybe get some water. Um, but allow them to kind of move and be active again with boys. Boys and boys and girls, they don't they don't associate with learning the same way. Girls typically can sit down and do a lesson and stay there. Boy, typically young boys have to move around. And again, I'm not generalizing anything, but that's typically from my, from my experience as a teacher, that's what I've seen. So that's something you can think about and incorporate, but have them do a project, that'd be great. It could be cooking, it could be cleaning the kitchen, cleaning their room, clean, painting, um, doing puzzles. Uh, you know, you, all, you can decide for your child uh, what's best, but yes, do, have them do a project. Uh, number seven. Right, number seven, okay. Um, ask questions, right? Ask them questions, just be inquisitive of your own children. Ask them questions, ask them about how they went, you know? Ask them about, um, you know, what their interests are, you know? Watch a film with them. That's another thing, seven is also included. Watch a film with them. Watch, watch a TV show. Find out about what TV shows they like to watch. Uh, ask them questions about it. You know, uh, my parents used to do that with me. Like I'd be watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something like that, or Sesame Street, or um, you know, just some show, some cartoon, Tom and Jerry or something. I don't know, Scooby Doo. Uh, and they would ask me questions. They, you know, they wouldn't drill me, but they would ask me questions like, "Oh, what's that? What you watching? What's the episode about?" You know, just to kind of get an idea of what I was taking in. And did they, they didn't always do that, but they would walk in and, you know, they kept tabs on me, what I was watching, because they wouldn't know what's going in my brain, was feeding me. So don't forget to ask questions and watch watch shows with your children. You know, sit down and watch a show with them. Say, okay, I'm going to watch a show with you. What do you, what do you want to watch? What, what are we going to watch today? You know, and sit down with them and set that time. It could be during the day. It could be on the weekend. Hey, we have our day. We watch our show together, right? Just like how you watch a show with your significant other. Sit down as a family and watch a show, right? That, 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 that says a lot, right? And you all discussed the show. What was the theme? What did you like about it? Uh, did you understand this part? Did you not understand this? You know, what they when they said this, you know, not everything needs to be explained, but you know, just having that dialogue with them will create them to be inquisitive and to them to pick up on learn certain things, right? So, <clears throat> so in reference to that, right? Um, those are seven things, right? And uh I'll give you one more, I'll give you eight. Uh, also just make sure that. In, in a counter argument, seven, I say, you know, watch TV, turn the TV off. Turn the TV off. They got the screens with them all the time. You know, they own their phones all the time. Turn the TV off. Talk with your children. You know, like I said before, talk, ask questions, do puzzles, turn the TV off, just turn it on. Right. There's a lot of news going on with the deaths and things like that. And these things are real and they can they can really cause a lot of stress and trauma to everybody in the household. So don't forget to turn the TV off. OK, it doesn't have to be on all the time. Turn it off. Right. You don't have to. You know, you can watch in the morning, get the gist of what's going on, but turn it off. Turn the TV off. Right. And talk with talk with each other. Build as a family bond together. Do meditation, do prayer, do yoga. That helps a lot, too. Right. But turn the TV off. Do something else. Right. Do something else that's productive, something that build, builds you all together and not and not brings more anxiety and fear into the household. Right. You want to be filled with positivity. You want to be filled with hope, hope uh, and not not with fear. OK, so thank you, family, for listening.
definitely subscribe put some comments down below i appreciate your time uh definitely like and share this video with your peers um again i'm coming from the heart a lot we're all dealing with a lot during this time frame but i hope you and yours are doing quite well and if if not i hope you uh, i hope that things do get better and again shout out to all the healthcare workers and professionals out there that are dealing with people that are dealing with the sick that are dealing with uh the the uh the people who contracted the virus so definitely much love and appreciation to you all and on that note peace and blessings i'll catch you all later all right peace